Let's make a video today. All right, so we're looking at, I'm just looking at it. You can look on your screen here. This is a question taken from a G past exam. I think it was 2020. And it looks like it wants um, the maximum perimeter. So we're maximizing or optimizing the perimeter of a rectangle inscribed under a sine curve in the upper quadrant, upper right quadrant between zero and pi over two. So the function they're giving us here is y is equal to two sine two x. So that has a horizontal stretch and it has a vertical stretch. So if I was to draw that, um, I know the normal sine wave, I'm just gonna stop it there because I know that would normally be at pi, but since there's a horizontal stretch, a compression, then this is gonna be pi over two. And they are specifically saying they only want the region between zero and pi over two looking at the question. And also there's a vertical stretch. So that means it maximizes at two. So there's your X and there's your Y. Just remembering this is in rads. It's an angle measure. And then that's your ratio measured along the vertical. What they're asking us is if you were to put a rectangle inside this shape, this upper part of the sine wave, which one, there's a whole bunch of them, which one would have the maximum perimeter? So they're asking us to optimize a perimeter function. What I'm going to do is use symmetry here. I know that's at pi over 4, halfway between 0 and pi over 2. And I know that, let's just take this point here, p, I'll call it x, y. Um, let's take this to sort of represent the rectangle that might be the one that gives us maximum perimeter. So I need the dimensions. I need the width and I need the height. So the dimensions are given by the width and also given by the height. So let's think about the width for a second. Well, I know that if I choose x as this location here, if I double the distance between x and pi over 4, I'll get this width. So the width could be written as 2 times the distance between x and pi over 4. And then the height is given by this, which is your y-coordinate. Well, there's your y-coordinate there. So the height here is going to be 2 sine 2x. Two All right, well, this gives us enough information to set up a function, a perimeter function. So the perimeter is going to be equal to 2 times this plus this which I also notice both have two. So I'm going to take a two out to join with the doubling of those dimensions. And then I'm going to add this with this. So x plus pi over four, sorry, x minus pi over four. And I'm going to add to that the sine of two x. Okay, so there's my perimeter function. I want to optimize. As soon as we use the word optimize or maximize, we're talking about differentiation. So the derivative of the perimeter function with respect to our independent variable x is going to be equal to 4 times the derivative of the inside there. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of this is going to be equal to cosine 2x multiplied by the inside function. Don't forget the chain rule. And I'm going to get a 2 here. And to optimize, to optimize or maximize, I set that equal to zero. So setting it equal to zero to optimize. And then I can solve for x. So here the four doesn't matter. That's going to isolate cos 2x is equal to one becomes negative one by two. So the question really distills down here to solving a trigonometric equation, my favorite equations. So what I'm after here first are all the angles for which cosine is equal to negative a half. I notice that cosine is being assigned as negative, and cosine is negative in the second and in the third quadrants. You could use special triangles here. The sides look pretty good. So this is the x-coordinate, which is negative 1, and 2 is the radius, meaning that this side here is root 3. That tells me that this angle here is pi over 3. Sometimes we call that the reference angle is pi over 3, referring it to the x-axis. So that's interesting because now what I know is, and I'm not going to pay attention to this quadrant down here, because down here sine is negative. 
which, by the way, would make the height negative, and that doesn't make any sense. So I'm strictly going to pay attention to the second quadrant. And this here is pi. So that means that this particular angle right there is pi minus pi over 3. So a will be equal to 2 pi by 3. OK, well, this is good. Now, I want to know what x is. So what I can do is put 2x in. So if I put 2x here, that's going to give me 2 pi over 3. And that tells me that x is equal to pi over 3. Well, I think we cracked it. Because now we know the angle. We can plug it back in. The answer actually needs to be an area. It says the area of the rectangle. So I'm going to take the dimensions, these two dimensions, and I'm going to use this to calculate the area. So the area is going to be equal to this times this. Or 2 times 2 is 4 out front. I'm going to place a pi over 3 here. So that's going to be pi over 3 minus pi over 4 multiplied by the sine of 2 times pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3. And this is pretty trivial at this stage. I know that pi over 3 minus pi over 4 is pi over 12. And the sine of 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant, as we know. We know that sine is positive there, meaning that that's equivalent to the sine of pi over 3. And I can use my special triangle. 1, 2, root 3. That's pi over 3. So the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So this here becomes root 3 over 2. Now when I analyze the answers, I need to make a little adjusting here. So let me just take this over on this side. So here I've got, well, I've got a root 3, and I've got a pi, a pi, and a root 3. And then down, and I've got a 4 as well. I'll put the 4 there, or I'll confuse myself. Down below, I've got a 12. And I also have a 2. OK. Well, these cancel nicely. So that's going to leave a 1 and a 3. So that ends up giving me pi root 3 over 2 times 3, which is a 6 down below. But I look at the answers, and I don't see that as a possible answer. Ah, I know what they've done. They've put the radical downstairs. So I'm going to multiply by root 3 over root 3. That's kind of mean-spirited, but anyway. So root 3 times root 3 is 3 over 3. And then I'm able to generate the answer. That's it. So the answer that's posted on the test is pi. And then we have a 2 root 3 downstairs, a 2 root 3. So always check. You might have the right answer, but you might have to adjust it a little bit to make sure it complies with the possible answers. It's multiple choice. Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to slap a like on it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'm making videos on a regular basis now, and I'll see you right back here in the next video.